How many parents have ever had the chance to attend a class with their child? More to the point of what we're talking about here, how many parents have been able to attend a high school sex education class with their child in attendance and emerged with an entirely new thinking process about not only what was taught, but how it was taught? Oh, and one more thing. The issue here is teaching kids not to worry about birth control or anything so worrisome, as long as they practice abstinence. Our guest is a Northwestern University ethicist, also author of the book Galileo's Middle Finger, which has been called a rant, a manifesto, a treasury of new terms, and a defiant gesture. All right, let's welcome Alex Drager now to the hard line. Alice, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. Alice, we'll get to the book in a moment, but I just want to bring it up because this was the thing that caught us. You went to East Lansing High School with your child, and you were shocked to see that it was more about sex shaming than anything else. I can only imagine what it's like for a parent to say, and your, your child, actually, your son is the one who said, come to class and you got to see this, right? Yeah, he did, because he has gotten a lot of sex education from me, and he was shocked that they were saying that abstinence was the way to go to prevent pregnancy and uh, STDs. Of course, if you don't ever have sex, that's true, but abstinence education doesn't actually reduce those rates. So his concern was they just weren't doing a logical kind of teaching. What was that reaction when you were in there and you saw it? Because obviously your son told you that this is what it was going to be all about. But when you, when you were sitting there and then you knew what was happening and you knew that this was being taught to kids, I mean, you just had to be stunned and really question yourself, are we in the 21st century or not? Well, I did and asked myself if I was in a public school because what was being taught was really a religious point of view. You know, they were teaching kids that one out of six times they have sex with a condom, the condom's going to break and the girl's going to get pregnant. I mean, this was just like really not scientifically accurate stuff. And really the lesson I took from their lesson was condoms break all the time. Why bother to use them? And this isn't the <laughs> lesson I want my son learning. Now, you live tweeted this, correct? I did. Oh, I can only imagine. It never occurred to me it was going to reach millions of people. I, you know, at the time, my Twitter following was 2,600 people. You're a, you're a professor. You're an educator. You know that when you get on Twitter these days, you have the entire world at your fingertips. I'm curious what came back to you as far as responses. Were, were people surprised? Or on the other side, did they tell you, wait a minute, it's right to teach kids abstinence? I'm curious. Well, the people who were following me on Twitter were saying they couldn't believe what we were listening to. They couldn't believe what was happening, and neither could I. So we were tw sort of tweeting back and forth. I was surprised that by the time my son got home at school a few hours later, it had gone national. I was, certainly wasn't expecting that. But basically, I was shocked to also learn that the same group that had been brought in to teach this at school was also um, handing out virginity pledge cards, suggesting the kids sign these pledge cards, saying that they would be abstinent until marriage, which really, again, is a religious teaching, not something that I need to have happening at the public schools. But you want to then hear the scientific, evidence-based presentation of sex education. That's what you're pushing forward, correct? Yeah, basically teach kids the biology, teach them the risks certainly of teen pregnancy, teach them the risk of STDs, teach them the facts and make sure that they're well equipped so that when they do approach sex, they feel ready. I would love it if they taught consent and how to do consent because nowhere in here was a discussion of how do you know if somebody's given you consent, how do you withdraw consent. That seems to me really important stuff in terms of teenagers today. But none of that was going on. It was just this sort of shaming sex is terrible if it's done outside of marriage. You'll get pregnant, you'll get diseases. You know, and kids are smart. They know that that doesn't happen to everybody, so they really need to be well equipped to go into the world. And in the book, isn't that part of you want to stress the importance of using scientific evidence to make medicine and science more ethical? It all comes down to that ethics standard, correct? And to make democracy more effective, because if what we want to do is have educated citizens, including educated citizens who are going to have sex, then I think it's really important that we follow the science and look at medicine, look at science, and figure out what is true, what do we know to be true, what are effective methods of preventing unwanted pregnancy and STDs. And that wasn't happening in this classroom. So I was pretty shocked, because East Lansing is a college town, it's a science town, so it was really surprising to me that this was going on. Isn't this also about American academics needing to step up Yes, absolutely, and that's what I say in the book, is that as the economy of investigative journalism collapses, because people expect to get their news for free, as you know, as that starts to collapse and we don't have as many investigative journalists as we did, we really need academics to start doing the hard work of making sure we know what is true and false in the world. Because without that, we really can't have a functioning democracy. Have you been criticized heavily on Twitter or other places by people who believe that abstinence is the right way to go? You know, I don't have any problem with the idea that some people are going to choose abstinence, and it makes sense to me that we want to tell kids that they should wait until they're ready and they should make sure they've had consent and they should make sure they're prepared to have sex. 
Uh, but the people who have come after me have really been saying that I'm part of the contraceptive culture, which I guess means believing in educating people, <laughs> and that I, I think that you know kids should go out into the world and have lots of sex. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is let's equip them with reality because they're not stupid. These kids live in the internet age. They know what's going on. You know they know what's going on in the world, and we need to really equip them for the world that exists, not the world we pretend exists. Ten seconds left. Will you ever be allowed in your son's school again? I'm allowed after school, <laughs> and if I want to go in during school, I just have to get permission. <laughs> oh, okay, we wanted to make sure because, I mean, let's face it, I mean, my goodness, an educator asking for people to be educated, you must stop this, Alice. You're actually going way too far over the edge. <laughs> Reminder to everybody, the book is called Galileo's Middle Finger, Heretics, Activists, and the Search for Justice in Science. It's a great example of all those things. Alice, thanks so much for joining us. I'll look forward to the next time we speak. Thank you, Ed. All right, take care. And we continue right here on The Hardline.